things are not looking good for him. You shared any images of your penis with anyone? Yeah. Okay. And how many times would you say you've done that? A lot. Can you kind of explain that a little bit more to me? I mean, my wife, my ex-girlfriend, back in the day, Tinder and stuff, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know how to. Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing on this fine? Well, the day I'm recording this is Monday, but I do have another video to put out before this one. So who knows when I will actually put it up, but how are you doing on this fine? Whatever the day it is, whatever the time it is, whenever you are watching this, I am doing quite well. So I do plan to get back into some of the stories that I was covering before the whole Bam Margera fiasco uprooted my life. I want to get back into the blind justice story. I want to get back into the Danbury story, and I will be looking back into the Rebecca from Soft White Underbelly story. So yes, all that stuff is coming. Yes, part three of the Bam Margera interview is coming on BJ Investigates. I don't know if y'all are able to like really fully wrap your mind around like how much that uprooted my life for an entire three weeks, but it did. I'm not complaining about it at all whatsoever. It was really cool to be able to have that experience. And honestly, thinking back on it now, I'm very glad that I did do it. At the time I was making the decision to do it, I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants, sort of hoping that I would be able to live with myself for the decisions I was making. And I absolutely can. I think it was the right decision. I would do it again if I had a time machine and I had to go back and do it again. All right. So today's video is going to be a reaction and it's going to be a reaction to a video I have not seen yet. However, this video has been recommended to me so much in my recommended in my homepage and all that on YouTube. I keep seeing it over and over and over. It comes from a channel I'm not subscribed to. Let me pull it up for y'all and show you. Okay, so it comes from a channel called The Villains. And it says, welcome to the villains, home of some of the best and most compelling crime, mafia, and prison documentaries on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. Use the email below for business inquiries. Okay, so it's this video right here, and it has seven and a half million views. So I'm sure that a lot of y'all have also seen this video. It's 22 minutes long, and it was posted two weeks ago. Now, I probably will have to blur out some of this content. I'll probably have to censor the audio just to make sure that it is able to be viewed and it doesn't get blocked and stuff like that. But it says cop realized he is going to jail for being a P-E-D-O. And then in the thumbnails, very simple thumbnail, it's just this cop with his arms crossed and it says, I want a lawyer. So like I said, it has so many views that I am sure that a lot of y'all actually have already seen this. So why don't we just do a little reaction together? I have not seen a single second of this video. I haven't watched a single moment of it. It just has so many views that I figured I would just go with it and hope for the best. So without further ado, let me pull that up and we will get right to it. I've seen a more despicable set of facts as I've seen in this case. These were the remarks of the judge who presided over the case of Jalen Fleer. Wait a second. This voice sounds exactly like Audit the Audit's voice. A San Diego County Sheriff's deputy. The 27-year-old looked clean as a whistle in his day-to-day -day routine, but a private investigation caught up to him, leading to an interrogation that led to a search, which then led to a reveal of over 20 felony charges. In this video... Is it just me or this guy sounds just like the narrator on Audit the Audit? We'll take you through the interrogation that finally put this monster behind... Hold on, let me go to an audit the audit. This is gonna drive me crazy. Y'all told me that the audit the audit guy isn't the same guy who's narrating the channel. Like the person who actually owns the channel isn't the narrator. So now I'm wondering, did they hire the same narrator? This is what it feels like to have ADHD if you don't. <laughs> Football player Taven Galanakis in Newton, Iowa for driving in bars. Special thanks to 5 O Patrol for sharing the original interrogation. That sounds like the same person. Okay. So back to this cop who did some P-E-D-O things, allegedly. Who once starred for Santana High School in baseball and football. He is married and was expecting a baby at the time, but instead came the San Diego County Crime Stoppers who received tips regarding the sheriff's quote-unquote lewd behavior. Their two-month-long investigation led to a lot of evidence that needed answers. This is how the interrogation went down this story with us, of course, in regards to the, um, the report that we're investigating. Okay. You're not under arrest and you are not being detained. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. 
Because the interrogator is acting upon tips from a non-profit organization, she has to set the disclaimer that this interrogation is voluntary and that he can leave whenever he wants to. He can even choose to not answer any important questions and can request a lawyer anytime he wants. But the interrogator has... And the thing is, well, I was about to say, and he's a cop, he should know this. But if we've learned anything at all on this channel in the last few months is the cops don't really usually know what they're supposed to Such know. Such a simple and open communication with Jalen that he looks at this interrogation like a conversation. Later on, he starts to open up about himself. Um, football, baseball, the gross one. The editing on here is funny. Let me see if I can turn it up. Let's see. College for a little bit. I got it as loud as it'll go. College for a little bit. Played baseball there. Um, I got a job here. Worked at Dick's Sporting Goods before this. Um, so this is my second job. Okay. Started working with this department for coming up on five years now. So baseball seemed pretty important to you back yeah, in high school. Yeah. Um, what position? Uh, pitcher. Cool. How's your arm holding up? I mean, soreness every once in a while, but I haven't thrown it for a while. So. Yeah, no, it's okay. so I'm in a little bit of a precarious position here because on the one hand, I want to kind of like root for the guy answering questions here because that's usually the side I find myself on, like protecting people's rights and innocent until proven guilty. But also just like the nature of the charges makes me personally biased against this guy, even though he is innocent until proven guilty and all that. So I'm in a little bit of a weird position here, but like, I don't know if a cop is asking me about my, how my arm is holding up i'm probably gonna start being a little suspicious like you're trying to build rapport with me to make me think that you care about me as a person and i quite frankly i know for sure that you don't so i don't know i i, I wouldn't be answering all these questions being all friendly kills me um i played softball okay, nice. so right. i was yeah um third short center and pitcher here in san diego yeah down um uh, hilltop Anita valley and have you always worked corrections uh, yeah, I attempted to go out to the patrol, went to the academy. Things didn't work out there, so I came back here. Did you have fun at the academy while you were oh, there? Oh, yeah, I enjoy it. It's good. I mean, camaraderie and stuff like that. So. Okay. Um, married? How many kids? Oh, yeah. Uh, married. Recently got married this last year in September. Okay. Um, we have a kid doing. I wonder what the nature of this interrogation is. Maybe they said it and I missed it because I was distracted. Oh, oh, it was the lewd behavior. So someone had reported him for lewd behavior. Okay. What? August. Oh, okay. Boy, girl. Boy. Very nice. Um, <laughs> so this nonprofit organization had reported him for lewd behavior. Yeah. What are you, like, hoping for? Oh, no, girl? I said looking forward to Oh, looking forward. Yeah. I thought yeah. you said, unfortunately. I'm no, like, no, oh, no. No, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, and your wife, how long have you known her? Uh, actually, preschool. Um, she's yeah, we met in preschool. Uh, went separate ways. Uh, she's now married. Met her back in high school. Things like I was trying to date her, but she was playing playing it hard to get again. Yeah. Um, then college came around, tried again, and I actually ran into her in PV like a little, about three years ago. Okay. And then yeah, we reconnected then, and got, got married, Spart. got a family, got a house. Um, I hate small talk so much. I hate small talk so much. If you want to interrogate me, you are a lot better off asking me about the interdimensional nature of our matrix. You're much better asking me about, you know, quantum entanglement or messages from the mothership or maybe you might get some mileage out of me talking about or mentioning the fact that every single one of us is merely the universe experiencing itself from a single pointed perspective. But honestly, ask me about this shit, like, oh my God, where'd you go to school? Where'd you graduate college? Are you married? Do you have kids? What is your favorite color? Oh, please. Honestly, you're not getting much out of me. I'm leaving. And I hear your schedule recently changed. How do you feel about oh, the schedule so change? Well. This? Oh, my God. Please, Jesus Lord. How do you, how do you feel about your new schedule? Yeah. Seven, twelve and a half in a row. Kills you. Seven off is nice, but it flies by, so. Yeah, then. Does it actually physically pain anyone else to have to do small talk and listen to other people do small talk, or is it just me? Is something wrong with me? Probably. The seven drag yeah. once you're here. So at least you're on your last day today, yeah. right? This entire discussion is important because it will create a pattern of events that could lead to a bigger crime. First, she establishes the background. And now she moves on to the place where the crime happened, social media. So um, how about social media? Are you active on social media at all? Uh, Facebook. And Instagram. Um, had Snapchat back in the day, got rid of that with my wife. We got caught in the academy with, with her and stuff, some stuff. But, huh. uh, Can you tell me about that? or? 
got caught in the academy. Is that what he said? Hold on. There's there are captions, but I can't see them on this like back end because the bar is covering it up. But y'all won't see that. It's a StreamYard feature. The play bar is covering up the captions. Let me see if I can see what he says. How about social media? Okay. Are you active on social media at all? Uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, had Snapchat back in the day. Got rid of that with my wife. We got caught in the academy with with her and stuff. With some stuff. With, okay. I got rid of that with my wife. I got caught in the academy with her and some stuff, but yeah, tell me, I don't, what is that? He's laughing. Yeah. Can you tell me about that or? Um, I mean, it was with another recruit in the academy, but. Okay. So you're um, communicating with another recruit. I was back in, I stopped. Everything got cut off. Um, oh. Got rid of, I mean, I didn't delete the Snapchat. I just got deleted the app. So okay. I haven't used it for like. He got caught with another, oh, here's the picture. LOL, he was my best man. Funny guy, just got to get to know him. So this looks like sometimes filming myself while I'm watching these for the first time isn't isn't as clear as maybe it should be. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so on Facebook, just because I like to jot down everybody's social media when I can, um, what's your mm -hmm. Facebook login, like your um, username? Uh just under Jalen Why wouldn't you want me to wrap my and then it's blurred out and it's a girl? What's your name? Yeah. Okay, cool. Like a, it's a DM on Snapchat, a message on Snapchat sent from him to a girl, I guess. And it says, Why wouldn't you want me to wrap my and then it's blurred out? Um, and then you said Instagram? Sorry? Instagram, yeah. Okay. What's your Instagram username? Uh, Honestly, I would not be answering any of these questions. Again, I am a little biased based on the nature of these charges. Like, I'm not trying to rush to help this guy. But uh, if I was being questioned, I wouldn't be guilty. So if I was being questioned, I would not be answering my social media hand. Like, go figure it out yourself. Like, I'm not answering shit without a lawyer here. And then you said you got rid of Snapchat. But when you did have it, what was it? Um, Just Jalen Flair. Jalen Flair? Okay. So the one that you had there, and has that so that account since been deleted or just deactivated? That one, the... just, just delete the app. I think, it's, I think it's still there. Okay. And w I know when it comes to um, Facebook, you connect it to an email address. Do you know yep. what email address is connected to it? And then your Instagram account, what same email? I think so, yeah. Okay. And I know sometimes with Snapchat, they'll have you either sign up with a phone number or an email. I believe it's my phone number. Okay, very cool. This does seem like a classic case of like a person being interrogated who has no idea that this could be being used against them, which truly blows my mind and astonishes me considering this is a police officer. So, um... By knowing his social accounts, the interrogator is trying to piece Jalen's social accounts with the anonymous tip so that a connection can be verified. By now, Jalen is too open with his social accounts, and it took him this long to ask the obvious question. I don't know, do you have any questions for me before we kind of... Um, I will ask what this is about. Yeah, so we're looking into some allegations that were made. We're kind of... It, it he didn't even know what it was about. Oh, buddy. We started with a Crime Stopper report, so we're just kind of okay. going from there. Um, uh, we did receive um, a picture um, that... Um, you know, when we looked into it, it looks similar to you. So I don't know yeah. if you can take a look at the picture and just tell me if you've seen this picture before. Oh, I have like 15 million things here. Okay. So this picture right here. Yeah, that's definitely me. I'm the gross one. Okay. So um, this picture right here, how old were you when it was taken? Uh, I don't know, 20. 20? Okay. Have you ever used this picture on any social media site? Um... I think it was Snapchat back in the day, yeah. Okay. All right. Have you ever shared this picture with anybody on Snapchat? Um, yeah, probably my wife, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously, I talked to other girls back in the day, too, but I can't remember. Right okay. Off the head. Um, if you had to guesstimate how many times you may have shared the photo, how many times? That one, maybe just a couple times, once or twice. Okay. So definitely to your wife. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've used that photo for your wife, and you were about 20 years old in the photo. You did share it on Snapchat, um, and then maybe some other girls you were talking to? Maybe it's just because I'm used to hearing interrogations, but this is just so obviously a criminal interrogation that I just can't imagine why this idiot did not ask for a lawyer. I mean, yeah, this was a long time ago, so I don't worry. And I say this idiot specifically because he is a police officer and he is trained at least I'm sure in some capacity on interrogation techniques or on investigation question techniques, like he really should be very aware of what's going on at this point. And he's still answering questions. Again, I don't have that much sympathy for him based on the nature of the charges, but people are innocent until proven guilty. Even monsters deserve the right to a fair trial and all their constitutional rights because we cannot pick and choose who gets them. But this guy is just waiving those rights. It seems he either knows or should know about how this all works remember who it was okay um have you ever posted it as like your profile photo or no, that one ever no. posted on instagram no. oh i forgot to ask you are your accounts is your instagram and your facebook are they private to add somebody yeah i believe i had to yeah you can't just request a friend yeah you can't just be anyone so that one's at least a little bit better where it's like you have to actively mm -hmm. search for somebody right you in the photo um and is that a gross font is that gross font yeah it's gross Okay, cool. This picture here was the first piece of evidence. The interrogator wanted to know how the quote-unquote anonymous tip could get a hold of a selfie like that. You can't download pictures of each other on Snapchat unless you actually send them. And it was never uploaded on Facebook and Instagram, so this means that he intentionally sent this picture to someone who is, according to the interrogator, a quote-unquote young female on Snapchat. Based on Jalen's facial expressions, you can tell that he's now realizing where this is going. Your schedule. I know that um, you work every seven days on and seven days off. What is your wife's schedule? She's every Friday, Saturday off on day shift, so typical nine to nine to five. Okay, so she works nine to five and you work like the complete opposite schedule? Depends. Every three months we rotate, days and nights. Okay, and how long have you been on nights now? Nights now, probably. And wouldn't even like the police union or whatever provide him with an attorney or like a rep or something? Probably a little over a month now, month and a half. Can I ask? Is this something I might I should have lawyers on? So right now, and I'll go over the behavior with you. You know, we're investigating allegations that okay. were made that you were communicating with a younger female on Snapchat and potentially. She decided to wait until like nine minutes into questioning to be like, oh, well, by the way. Actually, some material might have been shared. Okay. Um, some photos, some images, stuff like that. Again, it's very like surreal and confusing for me because usually the person being questioned is not a police officer, is not law enforcement. So it's very like, I don't know, but I try to, I still try to be fair in every situation and look at all sides. That. So we, of course, want to be able to hear what happened from your side if that in fact did occur or if it didn't occur we want to always Everyone that talks. the interrogator now learns his schedule which will help her fit the pattern of the investigation he once again jumps in to ask if this is something that he should have his lawyers on once again the interrogator this is not legal advice yes you should get your lawyer his response puts him at ease that he's not being treated as a criminal and they're only investigating allegations the first time she mentioned texting the quote-unquote young female on Snapchat, he didn't respond much. But this time, he gave an answer that led to the revelation of his Tinder profile. And from your side, if that in fact did occur, or if it didn't occur, we want to always... Everyone that I talked to, I mean, was about my age, I remember. Okay. Um, so who have you talked to? My wife. Um, I mean, this was back then when I had, I had Tinder. He describes that the only use of Tinder was when he met an ex-girlfriend. They dated for three years, and then he got married to his wife, who he had known since preschool. Now, in case you're wondering why we haven't displayed the second picture, it's because it's a nude picture. He recalls that the only person who had access to this picture was his ex's Tinder account and his current wife. His wife is loyal enough to not leak it, and even though he had a bad breakup, his ex would not leak that picture. You can tell he's denying to share the real source of this picture because deep down he's well aware of who he sent it to. I mean, I met girls on Tinder and stuff back in the day. And yes, yeah, some safe stuff, but I don't know who would save a picture like that. I mean, a dude maybe got yeah, it was safe. Not that one. And there's nothing wrong with this photo, right? It's just No, you. I agree. I just, I don't know how it would get in the hands of a younger person. I don't know. Okay. There were also some conversations that were exchanged between... 
I guess the lip licking is some type of body language thing. It's something I want to learn more about body language reading and stuff, but I don't really know what the lip licking means. If you know, leave a comment or put it in the live chat if you're here for that. Between you and this person. Me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't talk to anybody younger though. Not on Snapchat? No. Not recently? Not recently, no. He not only continues to deny sending this picture, but also sending this picture to a younger person, quote-unquote, recently. The word recently implies that he may have sent it to someone a long while back who he's not trying to disclose. Now, you said all of your social media accounts are private, right? Yeah. And I know you're a law enforcement officer, so I know that you've also taken the time to make your plates confidential. I mean, back in the day, yeah, yeah. I don't think my current ones are, though. Um, I mean, obviously, I ran your plates. Okay. <laughs> so you're okay. still driving the Ford Fusion? Yeah. And it's, is it black or gray? It's gray. Okay. And you got tinted windows on it still. The interrogator kind of let the mask slip a little. She's like, <laughs> obviously, I ran your plates. I mean, on the one hand, like, good for her. She's, like, busting serious crimes. And I'm very glad that someone is looking into this. Usually, cops are not going to be interrogated. Usually, they're not going to be seriously looked into. So good for her on the one hand. But on the other hand, like, oh, girl, keep your mask up. She's like, <laughs> I obviously ran your plates. <laughs> Like, don't try to bullshit me, guy. On the one hand, good for her. But also, on the other hand, if she's trying to make him feel comfortable and at ease, that kind of shows her true feelings a little more. You know, when it comes to the photo, I really kind of just, I really want to understand why this person would be in possession of the photo. But the only one who could really help me with that is you. Yeah. No, I, don't, I can't tell you that. I don't know. Okay. Well, along with the photo came some additional information about your personal life. Okay. Um, and based on some of the information you shared with me today, it seems to add up. Okay. See, um, so see, that's why if you are being questioned for something, you never know why you're being asked, why they're asking that specific question. It's just, I'm not giving you all legal advice, but you should not answer questions without a lawyer present, especially after you hear the word allegation, allegations, anonymous tips, tips. This is not legal advice. Go get a lawyer. But that's what I'm saying. At the very least, get a lawyer. If someone's saying that there have been allegations against you and they're asking you questions, even if it's something so simple as what's your typical work shift? Where were you on the night of the blah, blah, blah? There are many, many ways. Even if you didn't do anything wrong, innocent people who did not do the crimes that they are accused of committing get convicted for those crimes all the time. That is why, look, look, he thought they were just having some simple little friendly conversation. Turns out she was lining up evidence. And again, if this guy really did the things that he's alleged of doing, gross. Ew. He needs to be held responsible. I'm just using this as an illustration for sometimes people are getting asked questions about things they didn't do, getting asked questions about things that maybe don't relate to the crime that they allegedly committed. And you're just giving more information up for free. You're doing the cop's job for free. Is there any reason why the person would say they're you, they're you and share your information? It sounds like it'd be someone that knows me then, obviously. Um, I don't know who, I don't have any enemies that would be doing something like that. Can I ask what information was shared? What they, what they know? Um, well, um, we know that you're a baseball player. Yeah, I mean a lot of people know that. Yeah, so, so that information was kind of shared. Okay. Um, your work schedule? five years and I've worked here. Specifically the transition to seven days on, seven days off. Really? Yeah. I, I haven't shared anything like that recently. That's the busted face. I can tell you who that would be. So let's take it back a little bit. The reason why the interrogator used the word recently is because the sender knew his current work schedule something that was enforced just a few months before this interrogation. Now the information's not adding up, and it's clearly implicating Jalen. Now we have a username, J178211. 17 is the college jersey number, 82 was the high school jersey number, and 2011 was the graduation year. Oh. Now he... Oh. Oh. ...claims to have quote-unquote never heard of this account, but it suggests that this account sent the nude pictures. Wow, 178211. Ah, yikes. Hmm, things are not looking good for him. You shared any images of your penis with anyone? Yeah. Okay. 
And how many times would you say you've done that? A lot. A lot. Can you kind of explain uh, that a little bit more to me? I mean, my wife, my ex-girlfriend, back in the day, Tinder and stuff, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know how to. Oh, God. He's one of those dudes on Tinder that shares pictures of his you-know-what. Tinder is um, high school. Even, yeah, junior high. Did. did you ever share any videos of you having sex with anyone? With anyone? No. I've always had personal videos of me. Woo! This escalated right out of nowhere. Just about 50 to 200 miles an hour all of a sudden. That was it. And my ex actually had one, but... What does your ex look like? She's blonde. She's blonde? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you've never shared any videos? No, I have not, no. Just still shots? Yeah. So, um, when it comes to the Crime Stopper that we're investigating and the Snapchat account, um, and of course your phone number and everything in connection with it and some of the combinations of numbers and everything there, you can understand why obviously yeah, no, it's we have a growing nice, concern. Yeah, it's weird. Um, and of course your picture is attached to it. Yeah. Right. Um, which is even more like either someone's... Can I ask what you said you got new ones too? There were images that were shared, yes. That, can um, I ask? I'm sure you got them here. Can I ask to see what they are? You want to see the picture? Yeah, so I can get an idea. Do you want to Yeah. yeah. Um, so... I don't actually have a clear shot of one. No. Yeah, so I can't. I did not. Okay, I understand. Print yeah. out those pictures. I would pictures. talk to a lawyer because this is kind of. This is. Okay. okay. Yes, that. Um, I ask. I know. I'm sure you got them here. Can I ask to see what they are? You want to see the picture? Yeah, so I can get an idea. Do you want to not to? Yeah. Um, and of course, your phone number and everything in connection with it, and some of the combinations of numbers and everything there, you can understand why, obviously. Yeah, no, it's, we have a growing it's, concern. It's um, and if Hope you don't ask for a lawyer soon. And I know he does because we just saw him, but somebody was texting me. I got distracted. So I needed to rewind. But yeah, okay. So now she's saying, like, the stuff that you've said has actually made us more concerned. We have a growing concern. And when she said growing concern and the word obviously all together, if that didn't tip this guy off to ask for a lawyer, I mean, he just deserves what he gets. Of course, your picture is attached to it. Yeah. Right. Um, which is even more like either someone's. Can I ask what you said you got new ones too? There were images that were shared, yes, that. Can um, I Ask, I'm sure you got them here. Can I ask to see what they are? You want to see the picture? Yes. I think she does have it printed out and she's lying. And they are allowed to lie to you. They're also allowed to tell you that there's evidence of criminal activity that isn't there. Like, for example, they're allowed to say your fingerprints are all over the crime scene. We found evidence of your DNA all over the crime scene. They're allowed to tell you that even if they didn't. So I can get an idea. Do you want to not Yeah. Um, so I don't actually have a clear shot of one. No. Yeah, so I can't, I did not okay, I understand. print yeah. out those I pictures. Here he's about to ask for the lawyer. I'm the lawyer, because this is kind of, this is, I'm uncomfortable with this. This is weird. So, of course, like, um, you definitely have the ability to do that. And of course, yeah. you know, this is completely voluntary. Right, um, yeah. And so. Um, I just don't want to get caught up on something. I'm working this career. I don't want to get caught up on something. I fully understand. Um, yeah. So, um, you can, yes, 100% elect not to speak with us. You are not under arrest at this time. Yeah, I understand. Um, obviously, given the fact that we're here and the fact that we're speaking to you, I know that your bosses are going to want to speak no with you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. In this part, the interrogator has confirmed some details which are vital to the investigation. It was only after the discussion of the nudes that he finally decided not to share further. But another interrogator in the room, who was just observing, entered to ask three questions of her own. I have a couple of questions that yeah, you don't want to answer, or can I ask you the questions? Because you can choose to answer or not answer. So if I ask you a question and you're like, I don't want to answer that, yeah, you can no, tell me that. Um, one of my questions was, I think I missed it, but when was the last time that you had Snapchat? Because uh, I know you said you deleted it, but I didn't hear when you deleted it. I never, I just deleted the app. I deleted so, that when okay. I was in the academy. In the academy. So, yeah. When did you go to the academy? It's like a little over a year ago. A year, a year ago, yeah. so in 2019? Yeah, right at the beginning of 2019, January. Okay, and then um, what years did you go to college at Grossmont? Uh, 2011 to about 2013, okay. 14. And then 
I just want to make sure that we all understand each other. When my partner says um, a younger female, yeah. you understand that we mean someone under the age of 18? Yeah, that's obviously why you're here. You, you understand. understand that? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any siblings? I have a younger sister, yeah. She's 19 right now. 20, oh. 20 sorry. Oh, okay. And then um, my last question was, when she was asking about the house and the decorations of your house. In any of your rooms in your house, do you have that new um, that new look where they have like the barn door um, outer rail type thing? It's this man does not need to answer any of these questions. What is he doing? Country. I don't know what you would call it. I see it a lot. Um, yeah. On like yeah. those DIY shows. Yes. Do you have those in your house? Have one, yeah. Okay. Um. Here's what the three questions were confirming. Jesus, Jesus. Firstly, the reason that I'm like ugh, doing this is because, yeah, I mean, this guy, whatever. If he really did this stuff, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm not that concerned about him. But this is how they get other people who who are innocent when they're trying to piece things together. And this is how you can fall into the traps that can make you look guilty when you're not, that can do the cops jobs for them, or that can make your lawyer, when you finally hire one, have a much more difficult job. And it's just like, just why? Why is this man answering questions just in general? He deleted the app, not the account. So chances are that he could reinstall, use, and later delete it to look clean to his wife. After all, their schedules don't match, so he might reinstall it when she's not around. Secondly... The college years were confirmed just to set a timeline of activities. And the third question was just a clarification in case he later ends up denying what they meant. After these three questions, he chose to have a lawyer present and denied answering it. He should have did that before those three questions. When he heard that first one, he should have just said, look, listen, I I'm happy to communicate with y'all, but I really want to talk to a lawyer. That's not legal advice. Any more questions. By law, he was free to leave. But that was after he turned over everything to Johnny Law. With the next step, um, however, I'm going to go ahead and pull some documents here um, for you. So there are a few steps that we're going to be taking after this. Again, you are not being detained by us or anything, but we are acting um, on behalf of the court moving forward. Okay. Okay. So I will give you a chance to read through this. Um, this is a uh, search warrant that was granted this afternoon by a judge. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Who already had the search warrant ready to go before they even started the questioning. Um, the warrant um, does allow us uh, to grab some DNA swabs from you. Okay. Um, as well as uh, any mobile devices that might be in your possession um, or potentially in your locker. Do you have your personal phone with you here? I do have one. Okay. Yeah. Is it inside? Your locker. It's on the person right now. Okay. Ambush. So we'll, if you want to go ahead and hand it to us, we definitely don't need to go in and grab it from you. Okay. Um, but the, the search warrant does require that we take it from you. Also, if he really did the stuff that he's being accused of, ew, what a creep. He deserves all this. But it's like, I don't know. I'm just, y'all know, I, I like to do the, little, the full analysis. Okay. Okay. Um, additionally, um, it does allow us to have access to your vehicle. Okay. Um, is your vehicle parked here? It's parked a few blocks away. Okay, do you remember exactly where you mm -hmm. It's over across from Cap's Pizza over there. Cap's Pizza? Yeah. And is it like in a parking, it's in a parking lot. lot? Okay, um, is it like one of those paid parking lots? Yeah. Okay, so Cap's Pizza. I'll put a note on that. Um, so the warrant does allow for us to also process your vehicle. You guys are going to take my vehicle? No, we're going to process it here. After that, we will also have access um, to your locker. Are your vehicle keys inside your locker? Uh, my vehicle keys are in my vehicle right now. They're in your vehicle? Yeah. So you have a code? I have a code. Okay. Would you mind sharing that code with us? Um, I will have a lawyer say no to that. Well, the warrant allows for us to have access to your vehicle. Okay. I don't remember off the top of my head what the constitutional rule is for requiring a passcode. I think, I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I don't remember. I do remember learning about it. And I remember there being a difference between biometric data, like a fingerprint or a face scan versus putting a passcode in. I don't think a judge, let me look. Okay. Let's see. Where is this? Okay. So I will need to do a more 
thorough investigation. It actually this this video may cover it, but in California, as of 2019, authorities can't force suspects to unlock their phones with biometrics because it violates the Fifth Amendment rule against self-incrimination. So the court in that case said the government cannot be permitted to search and seize a mobile phone or other device that is on a non-suspect's person simply because they are present, okay? Courts in the U.S. have ruled that a passcode cannot be compelled under the Fifth Amendment because the act of communicating the passcode is testimonial. Okay, so... So passcodes to phones, which his is a passcode to a car, but passcodes to phones have been determined by courts to be testimony and testimony cannot be compelled under the Fifth Amendment. So this is certainly not legal advice. Please, for the love of God, this is not legal advice. This is me like trying to remember what I learned in law school. I can frankly cannot remember. But what I'm gathering here is that I don't think that they can actually force him to put the passcode in to his car. I think that's testimony based on what I'm reading here. I know that a lot of y'all really have studied up on this. Leave it in the comments below. If you do with the case law and stuff, I will pin it and y'all can look in the comments below for a pinned comment that more thoroughly explains this, that more thoroughly explains this testimony Fifth Amendment passcode jurisprudence. Yeah, so you break it. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I'll give it up to you. Okay. Um, I'll jot it down. Um, Thank you. I don't know the number. I know the y'all. Um... Now he's realized that there's no turning back as the so-called anonymous tips turned into an investigation, and finally turned into a search warrant for everything he owns. Literally everything. The officer was later put on desk duty for a couple of weeks until the investigation went its course. His DNA swabs and everything were collected, and then in came the shocking revelations. In the court case of People v. Fleer, there were four victims between the ages of 12 and 14, but prosecutors allege Fleer to have contacted more than 40 who described themselves as minors. The prosecutors read graphic letters of his encounters in the court. He even engaged in with a 14-year-old girl and contacted numerous other underage girls over social media with the aim of meeting up for sex. Count six. I have to to blur out all that what they just said. Y'all can go watch this video if you want to know. Six said on or about April 8th that Fleer unlawfully participated in an act of and with a person under the age of 16. And counts seven and eight said Fleer lewdly committed a lascivious act upon the body of 14 or 15 years of age. Jalen Fleer pled guilty to 20 felony and misdemeanor charges and was sentenced to 10 to 12 years in state prison with no probation. And he will have to register as a... (gasps) Okay. Everything else aside, like what I was saying about him, not he shouldn't have answered questions, he all that, all that. He did plead guilty. He pled guilty to 20 things. Oh, my God. Defender for the rest of his life. What started as an investigation in 2021 led to the arrest of this madman in 2021. It's not 2021. What started as an investigation in 2020. Look, it says up there at the top. It's April 30th, 2020. Investigation in 2021 led to the arrest of this madman in 2021. At the same time, we have to commit of this madman (laughs) and the efforts by the interrogator here who was able to take out so much of the she did do a good job i mean it wouldn't have worked on me but i'm also clearly not the type of person that this man is so who knows information from him voluntarily but even if he had refused to talk oh the search warrant had already come through so there was no point in hiding anything however considering that he was charged with 20 offenses do you think that a 10 to 12 year sentence was enough well, make sure to tell us in the comment section below. And as always, <laughs> what a divisive question to leave as the last question. Okay. So, wow, that was, whew, wow, the whole thing. Um, the nature of the allegations and the charges, just ew. And the fact that he has pled guilty to them, also double, triple, 20 times ew. Um, I do certainly hope for some type of justice in some way for the victims of that criminal activity. And I am glad to see actually this man held responsible and held accountable for his actions in some way. He will be in jail for many years, it seems. And so after that, it seems like he's going to have to be registered as a you know what offender. And so all that is, I don't know, I was going to say good, but it's not good. I mean, it's not good that we live in a world where 
people who are in charge of protecting and serving us and protecting and serving the laws and stuff act like that. Like it, it kind of makes me feel a little bit hopeless sometimes, but I am glad to see something happen. I mean, so many times nothing at all happens to these people. This video is already way longer than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to probably leave it mostly at that. But yeah, I wanted to react to that and I will be getting back into the Dan Barry, the blind justice and the Rebecca investigations very soon. And yes, bam, part three will be coming out on BJ Investigates also very soon. That's all I really had for today. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, Mina. Okay, bye.